सो हे गाइज आई नो इट्स बिन टेरेबली लॉन्ग बट आई एम बैक अगेन विथ अनादर वीडियो एंड दिस वीडियो इज़ क्वाइट इंटरेस्टिंग बिकॉज इट्स अबाउट अ कंडीशन कॉल्ड ऑटो ब्रोरी सिंड्रोम Yep, the name suggests it, and it is about how a body can create alcohol on its own, even if the person doesn't drink alcohol. So, if you watch this amazing show, you probably already know about this. So, this show is the Resident, and I think in the second season there is an episode about it. I think it's episode four, and after that episode, I actually was quite interested in the topic, and I went and read up quite a lot about it, and I knew that I had to do a video on this. so today we'll be discussing all about auto brewery syndrome about who can get it the symptoms the diagnosis and the treatment and as always i'll be giving you some take home points so that you know the important stuff so about auto brewery syndrome it's actually a syndrome which is known as gut fermentation syndrome or sometimes even called drunkenness disease so this is a rare condition which makes a person intoxicated or drunk without actually drinking alcohol crazy right so how does this happen this happens when our body turns sugary or starchy foods into alcohol by starchy i mean like carbohydrate rich foods so because of this auto brewery syndrome can be extremely difficult to diagnose and it can also be mistaken for other conditions So there are very few cases of auto brewery syndrome that have been reported in the last several decades and interestingly these stories involve people who were arrested for drinking and driving even when they were not drinking and driving but we'll come to this point later as well usually people with this syndrome they don't present with blood alcohol levels to that much of a high level that it can be detected by a machine like that but for some cases it might happen that way So there are some kinds of yeast aka fungus that can cause auto brewery syndrome and I've just mentioned a few on the screen so this is not an uh, limited list there might be some more but these are the most commonly found ones and let's talk about who can actually get this disease so both children and adults can get it and the symptoms are pretty similar in both and you can't be born with this rare syndrome but you can be born with or you can get some other condition that can trigger auto brewery syndrome and these can be conditions such as crohn's disease and liver disease in adults so that means in liver disease for example uh, liver is unable to clear out alcohol fast enough so even that small amount of alcohol that's made by the gut yeast it can lead to symptoms and uh, similarly in crohn's disease uh, there's like excess yeast in the gut which can cause uh, it to form ethanol because of the breakdown of sugary and starchy substances in the bowel in kids and toddlers there can be a condition called short bowel syndrome and the people with short bowel syndrome the kids with short bowel syndrome they'll have a higher chance of getting auto brewery syndrome there was actually a medical case reported that a 3 year old girl with short bowel syndrome would actually get drunk after drinking fruit juice which is naturally high in carbohydrates other conditions in kids can be pseudo obstruction or sibo sibo is nothing but small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and there can be some other conditions such as diabetes poor nutrition antibiotics inflammatory bowel disease and low immune system which can predispose to auto brewery syndrome so if the if if an adult has an existing condition such as diabetes or liver problem it can actually impact the diagnosis of auto brewery syndrome so patients with type 2 diabetes mellitus and liver cirrhosis they were tested to have higher level of endogenous ethanol as compared to a control group without the disease so the symptoms are all the symptoms of a hangover either you've experienced it or you've probably seen your friends or family with it with all the symptoms usual dizziness disorientation the, the typical headache nausea vomiting you name it all of that comes along with auto brewery syndrome so it almost looks like the person is drunk but in fact they're not one thing we have to keep in mind is that it can worsen other health conditions such as if a person is already suffering from chronic fatigue syndrome inflammatory bowel syndrome or depression and anxiety it can actually worsen it 
So about the diagnosis, it's somewhat newly discovered and there are no specific tests to diagnose Autobrewery syndrome, unfortunately, till now. So the diagnosis and management, it actually, it's best done with an interprofessional team. So it's a multidisciplinary team which requires to like come to a conclusion that it's Autobrewery syndrome. This could include your GP, a gastroenterologist, an infectious disease specialist, a nurse, a nutritionist. These are like the basic and it can have a lot more of a uh, you know team coming to a conclusion. And sometimes they might do a stool test to find out if you have too much yeast in your gut. That means they'll take a small stool sample and they'll send it to a lab. And sometimes some doctors also do glucose challenge. So about the treatment, uh, it can be like, I broke it down into these five treatments, but it doesn't have a particular treatment. So starting with immediate care. So we should treat the high blood alcohol level because this could present as acute alcohol poisoning and the patient might need to be stabilized. But like I mentioned earlier, this is quite rare and usually the people don't have very, very high blood alcohol levels. Second, also very, very important, we have to treat any underlying condition like Crohn's disease and this can help balance the fungus out from the gut. Third is drug therapy. They can take, um, give you drugs based on culture and sensitivity results for the identified yeast or bacteria and these medications can take up to three weeks or longer but usually they avoid drug therapy and they'll probably start with other conservative management first. Diet is super, super important and this is one of the main ways to prevent uh, autobrewery syndrome. So mainly we have, they have to reduce carbs and sugar in the diet because sugar is fermented into alcohol and carbohydrates also fermented into alcohol. So they'll have to avoid uh, sugary foods and simple carbs like white flour, all the processed foods and they'll have to eat more complex carbs. Uh, sometimes the doctors give supplements, nutritional supplements. So there's no proper evidence that this might help in ABS, but it might help. Uh, but there's not like proper studies on it yet. So coming to the take home points. So this is a very short topic and I just wanted to make it known that there is an entity like this and it's real and maybe if you have the luck some point in your life you'll come across a person who is acting drunk but is not drunk and it might be ABS. So this is very uncommon but it is a serious disease and it needs to be diagnosed and like I mentioned it has been used as a defense against drunk driving a handful of times but it doesn't commonly spike the blood alcohol level over the legal limit. So you may feel slightly drunk while someone else may feel like they have a hangover. So it can also be a sign of an underlying condition that is out of control. So the moment you were suspecting it, we should rule out everything else like the ones we discussed, like diabetes, IBS, you know, make sure they're not already depressed, they don't have chronic fatigue syndrome and things like that. So that's about it. I hope you guys found this topic as interesting as I found it. And if you guys have the time, watch The Resident. Um, I try not to binge watch it, but it was quite amazing. I kind of really like that show. Anyways, uh, that's the topic for today. Thank you so much and don't forget to subscribe and follow me on my social media. I'll be back with another video really soon. Take care you guys and I'm so so grateful for all of you and be safe.